Good morning, Chosen Family. I want to take a moment and extend a warm welcome to everyone who's visiting us or joining us for the first time. We know you could have gone anywhere else to worship. However, we are delighted that God chose you to be with us today. Hold on to your seats, open your hearts, and be ready to receive what God has for you. Amen? Amen. God has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to thank God just for waking us up this morning, amen? amen. Being able to walk in here, not being pushed in here in a wheelchair or in the hospital, we thank God right now just for doing it for us, and we thank you for continuing to do it for us over and over and over again, God. Ask God to release a word on today. We all need a good word, and we'll ask you God to release the word today has been released. It's been on my heart for a few weeks. Released. Released. God has a blessing for us. And I'm going to ask God to release that blessing. Release that joy. Release that strength. Release that healing on us, God, right now. In the name of Jesus. So as we think about the word release, I want you all to come on and give God a praise and just meditate on God. Because God is a good God, amen. Hallelujah.
Father, standing strong like never before, oh God. We ask your Father just to blow wind on us, Father. Like never before, God, we thank you that we can give you a praise today, oh God. We thank you. Oh God, we can move how you want us to move. We thank you. Oh God, you're going to show out for us today, oh God. So, Father, have your way, Father. Hide me behind your cross, oh God. Blow breath on my words, Father. Do what you want to do, God. Move how you want to move, God. Say what you want to say, God. Correct how you want to correct, oh God. Do what you want to do, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Hey, on, say. God says if you just give him a praise, he will move. God says if you just give him a praise, he will stand up in heaven for you. If you just give him a praise, if you set the atmosphere for his arrival, if you set the atmosphere for his arrival, if you get off those couches, if you get out of those beds, if you stand up for the glory, if you move for the glory, if you shout for the glory,
with me in the book of Numbers. Numbers, the 22nd chapter. Bless your name, O oh God. Bless your name. God, we thank you. We thank you. You be in Numbers, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 1. Bless your name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. It says in uh, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 1. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across the, from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was sick uh, with dread because of the children of Israel. Verse 4. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabs at that time. Verse 5. Then he sent uh, messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, at Pethra, which is near the river, and in the land of the sons of his people, to uh, call him, saying, Look at people have come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth, and they are settling next to me. Verse 6, Therefore, please come at once. Curse these people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. Verse 7, so the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the div diviner's fee in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke to him with the words of Balak. And he said to them, lodge here tonight and I will bring back a word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. Verse 9, then God said to Balaam and said, who are these mans with you? So Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Look at people have come out of Egypt, and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. Verse 12, And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Verse 13, so Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, go back to your land for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The title of this message is called, Who is Sending for You and How Are You Responding? Who is Sending for You and How Are You Responding? There you go. Who is sending for you, and how are you responding? Balak, the king of Moab, began to get frightened because he had forgotten a word of what God was doing in the people of Israel. He heard word that God was covering the people of Israel. He was afraid of their size and how they defeated his neighbor nations. If only Balak had a relationship with God, he would have known that God was not calling the people of Israel to take over the land of Moab. Uh, God had already told the people of Israel in Deuteronomy to not disturb the Moabites. Balak decided to take matters into his own hands and send his man to summon the man of God. Balaam, he wanted Balaam to curse Jacob and the people of Israel and return a favor. He was going to give him a great reward. Uh, Balaam recognized and acknowledged the anointing on Balaam's life. He said in, in the text in verse 6, therefore please come at once curse the people for me for they are too mighty for me perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land for I know that he who blesses you is blessed and him whom you curse is cursed there are a few lessons in this passage is number one you gotta watch and discern who's sending for you you will have people trying to prostitute your gifts and anointing to fight their battles and promising you things that God on giving you in the first place. And God is saying in the season, you got to discern who you're walking with in this hour. You got to discern who's sending for you to fight their battles that they can't fight themselves. You had a king of Moab who was trying to get up for a battle that God didn't even call his way. And there are many people who are walking with others, walking with leaders, and they don't even know the discerning call of God. How with God and then you go sin for the man or 
woman of God. And God is saying in this hour, you have to discern who is sending for you. You have to discern who is sending for you. God says, don't you allow your flesh to pull you in places that he has not equipped you to walk in. Don't you allow your flesh to pull you in a place, in a jurisdiction that you are not equipped in. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean that there are times that people will call for you. They will usher for you. And God has not equipped you. I have not prepared warfare for you in that hour. So you find yourself in situations uh, where you are fighting battles that were not meant for you. Not only that, you have people who are aligned to other people for their demons and their enemies. And God is saying in the season, he's cutting a line in the sand and he's letting the people know who will you serve in this hour. you got to have discernment on who is calling for you. Don't allow yourself to be looted to a place of destruction based off, some, based off someone else's insecurities. Balak is starting a fight that was not intended for him. That is something to be noted about. He's starting a fight that was never there. He was delusional about something that was not even there. He was delusional about somebody that wasn't even thinking about him. He was delusional to start a fight with the people of God. And God is saying in this hour, don't get distracted by the delusional people in the hour. Just because they're delusional don't mean that they are right. And God is saying for you, uh, who is sending for you? Are you discerning those things? Balak wanted to use some drive-through access where he, uh, instead of him serving God, and so he, he didn't want the counsel of God. So God is telling me in this hour, there are people that are watching you and watching for you, and they want what's in you and what's on you for their own purpose. You will find in ministry, there's a lot of prostitution that goes on. You will find in ministry, there's a lot of unnecessary foolishness that is going on. You will find in ministry that you have leaders who are seeking your gift, sniffing for your anointing, and they just want to prostitute you for themselves. And God is saying in the sour, will you trust him like never before? Or will you continue to allow your flesh to be pulled to a place of hell? Oh my goodness. Balak was sifting for the man of God. Balak understood that the man of God was a prophet and he wanted to get the word. He wanted the man of God to take an anointed gift, a holy gift, and curse the people of God. Uh, let me say that again. He wanted to take the anointing, the power, the gift of God to curse the people of God. He wanted to take the anointing, the power, and the gift of God to curse the people of God. God is saying in this hour, his power will not be misused. God is saying in this hour, the gift of his people will not be misused. And God is also saying in this hour, you ain't got to worry about the enemy because he can't do nothing to you that was not approved. So stop wasting your time for the enemy. The king summons for the man of God to use the gifts of God. He ain't even smart enough to understand the posture before God but want to use God's gift. Have you ever been around somebody that don't respect the anointing that's on you but wants to use the gifts that God gave you? They don't respect the anointing that is on you but they want to use the gifts that God gave you. Have you ever met people that want to attach themselves to you claiming they want to cover you and they don't even recognize what God is doing in you? When I started my church, I had people asking me, uh, uh, who is your covering? They wanted to cover me. They wanted me to be a sister church to their church. And thankfully enough, with this PhD mindset, how are you going to cover something that God is doing a new thing in? You can't cover because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God is doing and chosen. So there's no way you can cover something that you don't know of. There's no way you can cover something that you are not aware of the details. There is no way you can cover me and you don't know what God is doing inside of me. There's no way you gonna drive through my gift. There is no way you gonna try to use God's anointing and attach yourself to Chosen. Baby, where was your covering when Chosen started in my living room? Where was your covering then? Where was your covering behind the scenes when God was preparing us for the reveal? Where was your covering then? So you can't summons for something.
saying that God is not intended in this hour and God is saying stop allowing people to summons for you uh, when they don't understand what God is doing in you and through you. There's no way that Balak can go summons for the man of God and he don't understand what God intended the man of God for. And God is saying if you understand in this hour and trust him like never before your, your lot of days will be your greater days. But you cannot allow uh, the leader who got a fancy title the leader who got a little money you can't allow the fancy things in the hour to get you distracted uh, when God has called something else over your life. You can't allow the CEO, the SVP you can't allow the president of such and such. You can't allow the leader of such and such. The bishop the archbishop, the prophetess the prophetess. You can't allow Uh, for their greater good. How are you going to summons for me to fight your battle and you trying to use the God's gift inside of me? How dare you try to attach yourself to me? I just didn't understand. I've been in this text before and God was saying, uh, Balak, I had it twisted. Balak didn't put no respect on my name. Balak did not know that I was the great I am. Balak did not know that I was the beginning and the end. Balak did not know that I was the, the miracle worker, the divider, the coverer, the keeper. Balak did not know that I was El Shaddai, Elohim. I'm the father. Balak did not know whose power he was trying to use. That's just like when you go to the Gucci store, Christopher, uh, and you want to get something expensive. You got to ask for the representative to go get the keys to get the expensive thing. Everybody don't have access to the expensive thing. You got to go get the keys to unlock the case to get what you really want. You got to go get the keys to unlock the case to get what you really want. Everybody don't have access to that very thing. So God is saying, why are you allowing everybody and anything to have access to you just because they got a fancy title and a fancy car? Why are you allowing everybody to have access to you because you see their followers on the internet just because they bought their followers? Why are you allowing delusion to have access to you? And they don't even know what God is doing inside of you. All those people asking me who my covering was. I said the same covering that I had when I was in my living room. That's the same covering that I have. So how in the world are you able to try to cover me in the midst of the 11th hour when I was not hot then and nobody was thinking about me then, God will still cover me. So how in the world are you showing up at the 11th hour trying to be my covering? Well, baby, let me help you understand a few things. You can't cover something that God has already called forth. You can't cover something that God has already called forth. God said to me, daughter, I'm going to do a new thing in chosen. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. So when the coverers came to me, baby, your eyes have not seen and your ear ain't heard what God is getting ready to do over here. I don't need your covering in this season. Because when a coverer, give me that coat, eh, Corona Saya, give me that coat. I need your coat that's behind you. Uh, cover me real quick. Cover me real quick. Hurry up. We on the hot time. No, cover my head, please. This don't mess my hair up. When the coverer is covering you, you can't see nothing. So why would I allow a human being that don't know me cover me and I can't see nothing? I'm not allowing nobody to cover me in this hour and I can't see nothing. I got to see what God is doing. Walking 
So he tells the man to stay overnight. Balaam wanted to consider their sin offering and bring the foolishness to God. God responds to Balaam by asking him, first of all, who are these men? God already knew who the men were. He wanted Balaam to figure out who they were. Who are these men that you are talking about? God already knew what the setup was, but he was trying to get Balaam to a point that he understood that his heart had allowed sin to enter his heart. When you allow your flesh to pull you somewhere that God ain't called you, you start to entertain and plan your heart on that very thing. You want to fight a battle that ain't got nothing to do with you. You want to go off on somebody that ain't even checking for you. You want to do all of this. And still ask God to cover you in the midst of it. You ever had a friend that called you for a fight? Uh, meet me down here. Uh, uh, and you, and, and then you meet him down there. And this is this is Balaam. You in the car, Father, cover me, cause God, I don't know what's getting ready. God, God cover me in this fight, Father. Make sure I don't get no, no, no backaches. Make sure I don't get no broken bones. How are you asking God to cover you in a fight? You, you don't get out of your bed, you don't got dressed, and you don't got in your car to went downtown for a fight that ain't got nothing to do with you. And then on top of that, you gonna pray to God on your way, talking about cover you. Excuse me, God ain't wasting his time on foolishness. He already told you not to go. You were learning the story that Balaam went back to God because the man uh, Balak did not accept the no for an answer. So this is why you gotta discern who's checking for you. Because you may give them the first no, but they gonna come back a little bit stronger. And then he comes back to the man of God a little bit stronger. And he says, tell him and tell us God that I'm gonna pay him real good. And I'm gonna give him riches and glory if he just come and curse these people. And then the man of God, who honestly did not have the discernment of God, went to God and asked him a second time. These men want me to go over to the man I don't know to curse people that I know that you bless. And then God says to him, go. Come on, he tells them to go. He tells them to go. And then you have some old fancy theologians that would say, uh, well, why would God tell them to go if it wasn't meant for them? Because there's times that God got to teach you in the lesson. There are times when God says, I told you no once. I told you no twice. The third time, you're going to earn this no. Amen? So he then tells him to go. Uh, they approached him a multiple times. Who is approaching you? Who continues to approach you? They want to get something that is over you, that God has ordained for you. Who keeps approaching you? I had a young man that kept reaching out to me month after month. Will you come preach at my church? No. Will you come and preach at my church? No. Will you come and preach at my church? The answer is no. God already told me no. I don't need to go to God for a second no. I don't need to go to God for a third no. The answer is no. You got to discern who is checking for you. I don't shake for change. So I can't come to your church. I can't woo your people. I can't give them a good word. I can't prostitute their heart. I'm not getting ready to do all of that for your church. If y'all having financial problems, if y'all having prayer problems, if y'all got preacher problems, it ain't my problem. I will pray for you at a distance. I will love you at a distance. But I'm not going nowhere that God has not ordained me. I'm not touching anything that God has not called forth for me. I'm not doing anything in this season. I'm not being connected to nobody in the season. I'm not moving no way in the season that is not of God. And God is saying in this hour, you got to discern who's calling for you. Because baby, they watching you real, real good. They checking for you. They watch your wallet real, real good. They trying to count my Louboutins real, real good. I got too many. So stop counting. They trying to check for me. And God is saying, daughter, stay the course. Don't come off your integrity a mountain. Stay the course. Uh, sometimes we are so wrapped up 
in man's promise and we forget about God's purpose for our life. A lot of times we are wrapped up in man's promise, what they gonna promise us. I'm sure you musicians have played for people that said you're gonna meet uh, so-and-so, you gonna meet famous so-and-so, and if you stand on your, uh, your ethical chair, God gonna make you so-and-so. God is saying stop chasing people's titles and their names for clout. If you just let him do what he gonna do in you, if you let him cover and develop you, you won't get everything that's coming for you. You ain't got to let nobody summons for you because at the end of the day, God is going to get his glory. Uh, don't allow shiny things to take you off course. Don't allow slick talking people causing confusion in your relationship with God. Don't allow slick talking people to cause confusion in your relationship with God. You don't need to bring things to God that you already know is out of order. You always talk about something made you feel a certain kind of way. It ain't something that's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit already told you you don't need to take that to God because God has already given you the, the comforter. He's already given you the discerner. And God has said you ain't got to go to Holy Spirit and asking Holy Spirit if he already told you no. Verse 20, it says, that night God came to Balaam and said, since these men have come to summon you, go with them. But do only what I tell you. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled up his donkey, and went to the Moabite officials. But God was very angry with him when he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey stops in the middle of the road. As you read on in the text, the donkey stops in the middle of the road and then Balaam gets frustrated. Balaam was willing to risk his covering for money and clout. Why are you willing to risk the things of God for materialistic things that only last a moment? Uh, remember when everybody was buying FUBU? Who wearing FUBU now? Nobody. Y'all wearing Gucci and Prada. So stop, uh, stop giving up stuff of God for materialistic things that won't last no way. A uh, God, Balaam was getting frustrated with his covering. As you read in the text, it says the donkey stopped in the middle of the road because the donkey seen the angel of the Lord standing in the middle of the road. And then Balaam begins to hit the donkey. And the donkey did not want to move because he knew the, 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 that the Lord was standing right there waiting for Balaam. And then Balaam continued to hit the donkey. He's hitting up the covering of God. He's frustrated with the covering of God because he's trying to get to the man that summons for him. There are times where you get frustrated with the covering of God, the no that God gave you. You get frustrated with the no and it's just the covering. Don't you allow God's grace and Korosaya to be prostituted by your flesh. Uh, the man of God was frustrated because the donkey would not move. And the donkey, the animal, seen the spirit of the Lord standing right there. And then the donkey spoke to him. Why are you beating on me? And then, uh, then Balaam said, because you're basically getting in the way. God has to get in the way of your mess. Because if he left it up to you, you will find yourself in distraction and destroy, destroying your life. And God is saying in the season, don't you get frustrated with the no. You stand on the no. You respect the no. You praise and worship him on the no. Don't you allow your covering to be frustrated when God is trying to cover you. Don't you allow the covering, don't you allow the discerning of God to get in the way of man. God was covering him. I told you no once. I told you no twice. Because you and I both know that this was sin. But you still gonna come to me. And I still love you so much. I'm still gonna cover you in the process. So God is saying in this hour, you got to discern number one, who is checking for you. You got to discern the direction of God. If God said no, you don't need to wake up Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning asking God again. You don't need to ask God for another confirmation that he's already given you. God is not a God of mistakes. God is not a God of now, he don't know what he's doing. God knew you before you were formed in the room. And God is saying in this hour, how are you going to respond to the summons? How are you responding to the summons? How are you responding to the summons? My good friend that drove up here from Louisville, 
I told you about friends last week. I got real friends. He told me, he said, the next job you get, the VP job, you ain't even got to apply for it. Because the way your life is set up and the way the oil is dripping from your life, God ain't going to make you work, work hard for certain blessings. And God is saying he will surround people around you that can see and pray in the future. And God is saying in this season, will you trust him like never before? Will you lay down your high heels and your skirts and stop prostituting your gift and stand on the word of God like never before? Will you allow God to work inside of you and give you a, a calling and a covering like never before? Will you allow God to drive your life like never before? He told Balaam, I wanted to strike you dead because of your ignorance of what you know is unholy. God has said we got to get the sin out of our hearts. Balaam should have already known that he ain't got no intelligence to give a prophetic word. He got to go to the most how to get it in the first place. So how are you selling something and accepting a gift on something that God gave you in the first place? Now don't get it twisted. If God is calling a gift over your life, you accept the blessing. But there are some people who are out here prostituting themselves just to get a dollar. And we are living in an hour where God is saying, I am calling order to the kingdom. I'm calling order to the heart. And I'm calling order to the home. Stop going for every, every place. My aunt likes to say, you can't be the same place in every place. You got to be exclusive. You can't run from this church to that church to that church. You can't run from this job to that job to that job. You can't sleep with this person, that person, and that person. And then you mad when this person don't want to make you a spouse. But baby, you don't gave it all out to everybody. They don't have a sample platter. It could have been you're praying for a husband that's already married. Mm. Balaam, he already married. Ah. Balaam, she's already married. Woo How are we praying to God for things that have sinned? Mm. So God is saying in this hour, who is summoning for you and how are you responding? Because even when Balaam went to Balaam to meet him, he took him from one mountain to the next mountain to the next mountain. And then Balak had the nerve to get upset when he told him, I'm not going to curse God's people. I'm not going to curse the people that are in God's camp because I can't do it no way. He said, didn't you tell your God what I was going to give you? How are you going to give the man of God something that God is already going to give him? He said, I can't curse these people your fraudulent friends trying to get you to curse a Kurosaya because they got an issue with somebody. You ever had those friends that say, I got the issue, we got the issue? <laughs> no, I ain't got that issue because I don't need that warfare. A Kurosaya. I got enough warfare that I'm fighting, so I don't need your issues either. I will share the songs and the proverbs with you, baby, and you're going to have to pray on those things, but I don't want that issue. You got to be careful who you allow attach themselves to you. Attaching themselves trying to cover you. And God says he's the ultimate coverer. So who is summoning for you? Who is summoning for you? Who is trying to prostitute your gift? Balaam was willing to risk his covering for money and clout. Balaam got frustrated with God's covering for his, his flesh. Balaam goes and answers the calling and the temptation grows even stronger. And for some strange reason, he thought that on the journey, God was going to change his mind. Why do we put God in compromising situations that he's not going to respond to? There's not been enough teaching on God's wrath. They call it Osiah. God ain't going to keep playing with the people of God if we keep playing around in games. God is not going to keep allowing us to misuse grace. They call it Osiah when you know better. Balaam had the arrangement mixed up. He wanted to use God's power for his personal gain. So God is saying in this hour, what have you been using for somebody else? What are you entertaining for somebody else? Who are you allowing to summons for you? For their own good. Who's been watching and checking for you? 
for their own good. You got to know your worth. You got to know who you're walking with. You got to know what God says. You got to know when God is moving. You got to know your worth. Anybody can't check for me. Because I know my worth, baby. You can't check for me because I know my worth. I had a job interview. I wasn't even looking for a job. And she called me up. We went through all of this, all the questions. And she did say, uh, I know this part of the conversation is uncomfortable when we start talking about compensation. I said, oh, not for me. I've been in HR for 20 years. It's a very comfortable conversation for me. I said, uh, so let me just go ahead and run this down to you. I'm almost, I'm, I'm a couple of months away from my PhD. I said, uh, I have a master's degree in this and I have over 20 years of experience. Can you all afford this resume? She said, uh, I, I don't think that we can. I said, well, this was a wonderful conversation. I will pass your information along to somebody else. And she said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, we can restructure this job. I said, darling, if you restructure the job, I'm going to need you to match what I already have. And you're going to have to give me a little bit more for me to leave because I'm comfortable right now. And then she said, well, let me call you back. Uh, I already knew in my mind, baby, you can't afford me because if you did the research on me, you were already knew that I was out of your budget. If you just looked at my picture, you would have already knew that I was out of your budget. If you just did your research on who you was calling, you would have already I said, I know somebody else that's looking for a job. Uh, you may be in their budget. She says, no, I want to know if you would just wait a few months. I said, baby, I don't wait on anything in this season. Uh, no, I'm good where I'm at. Uh, they take care of me. Uh, they, they take real good care of me. So why am I going to disrupt something with me and God? It wasn't about the money, but it was also about the calling. I knew where I'm called to. I knew who I was connected to. But I didn't mind entertaining the conversation. A uh, God is saying in the season. And even though it sound good, even though it look good, you still got to know if it's a God. I got another call for another job. It was a VP, VP job. Uh, and they were saying they were going to do X, Y, and Z. I said, well, I've been in this game long enough. What you talking about doing is that you want me to take time away from my family. Uh, you want me to work some weekends. And baby, I already done moved past that threshold. I'm not new to this. Uh, so what you talking about, you're going to have to add a few more zeros to that conversation. And I'm going to have to take away some of this other the stuff God says you got to know your worth if you gonna summons for me you better do your homework because you got to know the God that I'm serving you got to know the people that I'm surrounded around and you got to know my obedient heart to God and God is saying who summons for you are you serving him or are you serving the stuff who summons it for you or is your heart in it with him to win it or are you going after the one thing that you just want who is summonsing for you are they taking care of you what are they promising you who is summonsing for you what are they trying to tell you that you don't have that you already don't need who is summonsing for you you gotta know the red flags you gotta know your red flags don't you allow your Balaam season to get in the way of what God is doing in your purpose. We are short-minded, short-sighted people. And God has the ultimate plan. He has the ultimate plan. So you got to be careful. As my sermon last week is connected to the one this week, you also got to know who you are with. If your friends don't pray, then you need to bless them on their way. You got to bless them on their way. It's okay. Do you pray? How often do you pray? They talk about um and hum. No. What can you pray for? You can't pray for me, baby. Because um, um and hum ain't going to get it. So God is saying in the season, who are you? Who's summoning for you? You have to trust God and what he's doing. God says, use your discernment like never before. Say discernment, discernment. Discernment, discernment. Put in the comments, discernment. God is going to bless you in this season. God is saying a thank for musicians. I've said this before. I think I said this about six months ago. Stop allowing people to prostitute you. If you just trust God on that one, he going to bless you on that one. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that in this season, Father, we will not fight our covering. We will not be frustrated in the no. God, we thank you that in this season we will not allow our hearts to be intertwined with the thing of sin. God, we thank you that in this season we will be mindful, Father, about who you put in our circles, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you will cover our mind and cover our heart and cover our walk like never before. And God, we thank you for being such a gracious God, Father. You extend grace, Father, when we don't even deserve. And God, we thank you that you will show us in this season, oh God, who's summoning for us, Father. And are they coming to take, Father, or are they coming to give? But God, we thank you that our ears will be sensitive to your voice, oh God, and our hearts will be sensitive to your will. So have your way, oh God. And Father, I call forth the person today, oh God, who has not had an opportunity to give their life to you, oh Father. I thank you that they will have an encounter with you, oh God, that they will say, oh, I repent. I repent for my sins. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And he raised on the third day. And if you've just said that you've just given your life to Christ. So Father, cover them in this season, oh God. Allow them to be under great leadership that's after your heart, oh God. Allow them to be surrounded around people, oh God, that will pour into them, oh God. And cover them in such a time like this. Have your way, Father. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And all the that agree say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so. And amen. It is time for the tithes and offerings. It is time to bring forth the tithes and offerings. I guess Denim is having a Balaam moment. <laughs> As you know, there's three ways to give through Cash App Chosen Ministries. Simple Give, Chosen Ministries, or you can mail a check to 30 Triangle Park Drive, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45240. If you all have your offering, you can stand. With your offering in your hand, you say, freely I sow. And by faith, I watch God make my harvest grow. All right, you can now bring your giving onto Denim or your cash app. All right. All right. Father God, we thank you for this offering, oh God. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing, oh God. We thank you, God, that those that wanted to give, Father, that, Father, you will give them an opportunity to give in other ways, oh God. And God, we thank you that, Father, we will be a 100% tithing church. Father, let someone have faith on the 50 cents. Let someone have faith on the dollar, oh God. Let them have faith, Father, like the woman, Father, with the oil. Let them have faith, oh God, to give you all that they have, oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, bless God. Bless the name of the Lord. I just want to thank you all for joining us today. I want to give a special shout out to my friend Christopher Blevins. He's our marketing director. He's one of our good friends. He drove all the way from Louisville just for his friend. Bless God. And I just pray God's covering over you. I pray that your travels to and from, that God will cover you like never before, that he will still just build in you like never before. You are a name to be reckoned with. And God, I thank you for allowing him to be added to our life and to our chosen family. And Father, we just thank you for all that you do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. everyone for joining us today. Would you all stand? We're going to close in a prayer. I also want those of you who are here today, including everyone that's here today, we do have some refreshments over in our hospitality room. Please stop over to get some refreshments, wear your mask, and social distance, and we'll, we all will be fine. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you, God. God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for another word, God, that will build us up, God, that will edify us, God. Continue to bless our pastor who has given out this word, God. Build her up where she has poured out, God. Oh, God, again, we ask for traveling mercy as people are leaving to and from, God. 
We thank you for our musicians. We thank you for our psalmist, God. We thank you for everything that you're doing for Chosen, God. You said that we trust you, God. You'll send forth who we need, God. And you have sent forth who we need. And we're forever grateful. It's in your perfect and precious son, Jesus' name, that we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen.